I'm going to go over a quick video on how to set your Pasco capstone up and get some initial data for both your Newton's second law and your mechanical energy labs. Both of them have the same setup, so I'm not going to create a separate YouTube video for the mechanical energy lab. Log in, open up the capstone. There's two different types of motion sensors. It uses sound to figure out where position is. There's a blue type and a black type. If you've got a blue type and you go into hardware, you'll find that it automatically finds it. If it's a black type, you'll see the 750 interface picture and you'll have to click on where it's plugged in and add on the motion sensor. But here it already found it. We are going to change it so that the motion sensor position is being recorded to three decimal places. The fact that we're increasing this means that we're probably going a little bit more accurate than the manufacturer thinks is warranted. Okay. Now with this thing here, I'm going to very quickly see exactly where it is. So in this case here, I've put the cart on the track. I'm going to see where it is. So here it says one, two, three. So if I say position, if I put the cart on the track at 0.5, I would expect it to read 0.5. And it's quite close, okay? Not exact because you'll notice that the strip along the side is a little bit longer. But I don't really care if it's exact as long as, long as it's consistent. So if I put it at 60 centimeters, I'm hoping it'll say something similar. So right now the card is at 60 centimeters and look, it's very much similar. So if it's off by a one or two or three millimeters, that could be because you set the card slightly off or um, the motion sensor itself isn't perfect and it might have a systematic error, okay? If it's off by quite a bit, bit let an instructor know. Okay, so this one here was the one, two, three digit type of display and we were just checking to see if the equipment was working. So the next page I'm going to add is something so that you can uh, see sort of like the position and velocity graphs. So dragging over the graphs, I find most people have an easier time if the graphs are side by side. So position and time and velocity versus time. Now this is the data that we were had before. And it was, it's so, it's actually trying to measure things to five uh, significant figures, which uh, it's not surprising, it has a little gap right there. Okay, so this one here, the little pull down menu allows you to show which ones. So I'm going to actually take that one off so that it's blank. And the other thing I'm going to do is on here, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to pin that tools so that the tools don't disappear on me. Okay, now just to give you a quick, um, demo, I'm just going to give the cart a push and just so you can see the velocity versus time. Now we're going to increase the sensor rate to 100. It doesn't change things that much, but you do get a little bit more data if you only have a few data points. The overall average uh, should be similar to the uh, smaller sample rate though. Okay, so I'm just going to hit record and push it towards the motion sensor and let it go so that it's drifting on its own and slowing down because of friction. Hit record right over here. Okay, so uh, this is where it was stopped. This is where I'm giving it a push, right? And you can see that the data is not very good right here. This is where I'm catching it, okay? So the part that you're most interested in is that time in between roughly 1.5 and 2.5 seconds where it was the position was getting closer to the motion sensor and it was slowing down on its own. So you can move the data around into the middle and use the mouse button to sort of scroll, okay? And this sort of digitization where you can see that um, you've got this sort of bump right there is completely normal with uh, digitized types of data. It'll be flipped between one and the other. If it was an analog type, it would be more of a smooth reading. So this is where it was slowing down on its own, okay? And so what I'm going to do here, this one is depressed. So I can choose linear fit, and then I can use the highlight box to choose what part of the data I want. Now here, I know that it was pretty much slowing down to just about 0.25. So I'm trying to just avoid right where I'm catching it 
and this is where it's pushed. So even though we've got this digitization, the overall average here should be pretty good. Now you might get 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04 for your data, that is completely fine, okay? We do expect this correlation to be a little bit uh, more uncertain. This is not a well-known quantity. If something is gonna be off in this lab, it's probably going to be your friction acceleration estimate. So just keep that in mind. So you'll do that a little, a uh, few more times and get an average. Try for different speeds. Uh, I wouldn't expect your uh, acceleration to be very small. Uh, 0 0.05 might even be reasonable. 0 0.06, 0 0.04. If this is negative, get some help from an instructor. Okay. The other part of the lab, you'll be getting it where it's speeding up and you'll have a nice curve because it's accelerating and you'll get the uh, data going the other way.